tonight. Thank you for bringing it. I think we should begin with some of the events of today. Um, today, the president officially and formally presented the new face of the Naira uh, to, to Nigerians. And those who have praised that decision of the CBN to come up with the redesign, they've given several reasons for doing that. But what is your view about, about that? This is not the first time we're seeing a redesigning or the, uh, I mean, the renew, renewing of it, the Naira, of the currency. You know, I, the Naira was never redesigned, going by what they presented today. Uh, they recolored the Naira. They changed the color of the different denominations. Isn't that some kind of redesign? No, that's not. It's, uh, from the point of view of redesign, there was something spectacularly different from how the Naira looks from differently from what it used to be. So you're not impressed? No, I, I already said this uh, redesign process was a scam. I've been issued. That's from the beginning. And I'm not surprised it's, this is how it ended. Uh, I think they just uh, removed a filter. Like people used to say, maybe they took it to TikTok and they used a the filter to just change the color of the Naira and then they poured a dye on it. It wasn't a redesign. You don't think, uh, apart from the face value, the re essence of some of the reasons that the central bank governor gave for security reasons being part of it, the issue of inflation and a few other issues have been drawn into the reasons for redesigning. Uh, do you think that this, it this was makes sense? any monetary policy that uh, the Naira needed? It was to revalue the Naira, not to redesign it. It is never, it's never, I've read all the economics books in the world and never in any book or any policy have I found the change in the outlook or the face of any currency uh, that brings the currency to any value. It's just uh, a contract for the boys, and I congratulate those who got a contract for, you know, uh, making this happen. They're lucky. The rest of us know that this was a scam. I mean, this is not the first time. So when you're saying it's a scam... It's, what it's, exactly see, let me tell you, I was, uh, I was around in 1984, I, if I am correct, when the Naira was, uh, was redesigned. That time, I think it was a redesign. Uh, it was Buhari regime in military uniform. And the people that benefited from it were still the rich people. The poor people queued up with uh, 200 Naira, 40 Naira, the person who had the largest amount of uh, currency in my village was 40,000 Naira in those days. And when he brought it out, everybody was like uh, surprised that he had so much money. But by the time they redesigned, the redesigned Naira was given to him, they had reduced the value, I mean, the amount of money he had because of corruption. That's the first time I knew that even that regime was a scam because the people who carried out the exchange of the Naira, the new notes and the, uh, the old notes, we're just making uh, a killing out of it. So it, it ended up enriching people, not enriching Nigeria. It's, it was never known that in 1984, the value of Naira increased because Buhari. But what about the security reason that, that was given? And the fact that there's a whole lot of issues within the economic uh, sector of the country relating to the, uh, the reasons why the Naira has to be redesigned. And there are a lot of people giving you know, huge amounts of this money, <laughs> which the, the banks have said, look, they're already returning. In fact, some banks have now opened on Saturday to allow people to bring those. Yes, yeah, because they open on Saturday because, like I said, this will afford bank workers and whomever is involved in this to make some little box out of a period to exchange your old Naira notes for the new ones. But the point is that the central bank governor is not the chief security officer of Nigeria. You might say, well, the president said he signed off on it, but it's not going to help with the security situation. If it did, we wouldn't be hearing of it. What would you do to defend the Mr. Shogoda? If you, you know, were, I would, I would, if you were, if I would you value the Naira, not redesign How would you do that? Well, and what does it mean? If you, it's, it's a there are macroeconomic policies for people in the executive sector and the central bank. And, you know, the central bank is naturally supposed to be in charge of monetary policy. But one of the things they are doing there is that, as I have said, the central bank of Nigeria so today is just a glorified bureau of change where you, if you know, have connections, you can get dollars and they change for Naira at a special rate. That is not monetary policy. Monetary policy is looking at the value of your currency, how it's uh, performing against all other currencies around the world. And a, lot of, a number of, a range of uh, activities that needs to take place for you to have a Naira that's valuable. When people have lost direction and, um, um, and, and, and exposure and interest, and 
intellect about how to deal with these issues. They start playing around with redesign and all these very, very childish uh, monetary policies that uh, Nigeria has been known for recently. The value of the Naira has not reduced since I mean, it started the, the redesign. The inflation rate is about 20.7% yes, yes. as we speak. Yes. And you want to be Nigeria's president. Yes. Do you see it going down? Should you, be, should you win that election? Well, yes, it will, because we're going to engage in production. We're going to invest in our people. We're going to ensure that the central bank governor is not a BDC operator. He's a person who is qualified to hold that position. And he has a very strong grip on a you know, uh, monetary policy. And the president also has a strong grip on the new economic policy that will enrich the Nigerian people, not enrich it. Just how low do you think you can draw it to? I cannot tell you directly now. But you should have a plan. I mean, but, what, what kind of inflation rate, what rate do you think makes sense for the kind of government you are hoping to run? It will be an inflation rate that is at par with production levels and confidence levels in our market because there will be a new sheriff in town. But to give you a particular number at this point is uh, <clears throat> to engage in the kind of fallacy that led us to this point that we're in now. You know what the American people were screaming and uh, were really upset about as uh, they went into the midterm elections. Yes. The inflation rate of the United States yes. went to about 7.7%. Yes. And that almost affected the chances. In fact, in so many states of the United States, it affected the chances of the ruling party. Yes. Uh, I mean, so there must be a target for you. I mean, are you dragging it into no, a single digit? I'm not, yes. But you should the, have a the plan. Hope is I mean, Nigerians are watching tonight. We, 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 want, we, you, yes, you we want to get to better. single digits. Yeah. And as the U.S., in the U.S., you also know that when it got to a point, they had to make it, they were planning to make a law. I don't know if they eventually make, made that law, which is a, there was a reduction in the Inflation Act kind of uh, law that they were pursuing. Because they were concerned about not just elections, they were concerned about the ability of uh, their citizens to cope with uh, the inflation rate. And they started adjusting a number of things. Not just a law that says inflation must remain at this point, but they were also concerned about employment, they were concerned about production, they were concerned about losses, and they were also concerned about the manpower running the economic uh, affairs. So these are issues that you get from leaders who are concerned about the welfare of the people of a country, not the redesign of the Naira, which cost us uh, $218 billion Naira. We could have given that money to us too, uh, so that we can start from somewhere. They can call up this strike conclusively, and the education sector could be running. Mm -hmm. Why we make, uh, why, why we produce possibly... Since you uh, touched on, on yes. the issue of ASU, yes. for those who think that maybe the government is not running education sector well and those who they are not running anything give, well do you think that i mean you, you think that you take away the running of uh, the education tertiary and in, uh, institution for that matter into private hands or how do you run it better no uh, i would never be part of those who ask private se sector to run uh, education we it will be a publicly run education program and we are focusing on the free education. I have said it and I'm repeating here that every student in Nigeria who is in high institution, there are 1.7 million students in high institution who get at least 100,000 naira per semester as study grant from the federal government. And I mean it. I'm not going to make them take loans. Where would that money be coming from? Uh, well, it will come from a number of places that we have discovered money is hidden right now or where we are not efficiently collecting revenue. Where are those? Uh, I found out uh, just two weeks ago in research there are over uh, 11 trillion naira from revenue generating agencies of the federal government that now return to the consolidated account. The NLNG, uh, which is our gas producing company, of which we have 49% uh, uh, investment through the NNPC, is depositing huge amount of uh, dollars to us, but they're not transparently done. We'll make, it, make them deposit that money in the consolidated account of the federal government, not the NNPC, because that's a, that's a cesspool of corruption. Uh, we have all found out that uh, oil companies, both local and international oil companies, are owing over four point something billion. I believe it's six point something billion beyond that, that we can collect very quickly and put the money to use locally. We don't need to borrow. Uh, in my first and second, my, my first four years, I have discovered where we can plug all the loopholes and make more money that's a large pile so that you don't you need have to engage an, in... You have an idea of uh, 
uh, the the uh, debt servicing in the budget at the moment. Yes, I, I, and I, the I'm percentage of that in the entire <coughs> budget. So, of we, so I, I've said it. So, because the reason why I'm asking this yes. question is that we've heard over and over again how politicians make promises. I'm not Nigeria. a politician. Well, I'm a, I'm a political activist. I'm straightforward about what I'm talking about. Because you're running for office. That's well, that, that doesn't basic make me a definition politician. Of, the, of being a politician. Well, what politicians I mean, are known as in Nigeria are people who deceive people, and I, I'm not that kind of a person. If but, that's the meaning of politicians but we, to we, Nigeria, we, we, we because we are to talking consensually to Nigeria, so that Nigerians don't feel that there's a deceit here. I'm not for deceiving those, anybody. Just for a moment, if yes. I put in the question, because you are saying that you're not going to borrow. You're not yes. going to do this. You're going to spend almost 170 billion naira mm -hmm. or every five months. Yes. Because you said every semester you will give free 170 billion naira no, it's to Nigeria. Yes, 100,000 100, naira to times 1.7 million. Absolutely. So that is where uh, the question comes. Yes. Where would you be getting this money so, from? Uh, so when I give, Nigeria I, could I, be able to pay lecturers. I've just told you about 11 trillion naira of unremitted revenue. They're sitting in the bank accounts of our MDAs that we can get because it belongs to the federal government. 11 trillion naira is a huge amount of money. Money is owed by oil companies. If we do the investigation further where they deposit the oil, where they take the oil to, you discover it's about $62 billion. I've told you about NL, NLG partnership and what they owe us and several other sources of uh, income in this country that are being covered up because they know there's no leadership who knows how to find all this money. I'm talking to you as a citizen of Nigeria who has operated alone, almost virtually, finding money, kicking out sources where money has, has been hidden, having to provide evidence for stolen monies, and ensuring that some of the monies that were taken outside offshore corruption have been the person who, who covered it the most in the last, uh, since 2006, so, through Sahara reporters. Yeah. So when I'm telling you this fact, believe them. I know the politicians. I know how they steal. I know how the money in this country is being frittered. I'm not just saying it to lie to you on TV. It's a matter of fact. And that if you get to work, you'll be shocked. Nigerians will be begging me to continue in government after my two terms when I do the job that I'm telling you. But I don't want to do more than two times. I'm okay. not interested. You, you are not a sit tight. No, no, I'm not interested. I'm just saying that, you know, there's a lot of low-hanging fruits and there's a lot of things that can be done without making governors look like rocket science. So you think corruption is a major problem? It's not about corruption. It's the cost of governance. It's the fact that what we're not efficient. What would you do differently in terms of cost of, uh, cost of governance? Really, I've, I've said it. I'm not going to repeat a minister and have a minister of state. I want to work towards the elimination of one of the legs of the National Assembly because it's useless to have two arms that are not doing it. There are more senators in Nigeria with a uh, 21 trillion naira budget than the U.S. government that's like trillion of dollars in, in budgets. What are we doing with them? Get rid of one, get rid of one of them. So and show you, that you, you will collapse you know, the you, National Assembly into two, one arm? One arm, yes. One arm. How easy would that be? It, it won't be easy, but it's a matter of fact that we're going to convince the people that you don't need this burden. And that's just the National Assembly. The executive arm has its own tool that I can do easily. Because, you know, assuring because that a lot of the, the ministries, said, agencies now that you have that the, are not the, functioning. Which are, of those kind of agencies? There are plenty of them that I've discovered. And if we sit here and start discussing them, you'll be shocked at how many agencies are For example, that are which one gives you the most worry that doesn't need to be in existence, for example? Um, I, I don't know why we have multiple security agencies, for instance. I will merge, for instance, the EFCC. I'm just giving one example uh, with the ICPC. They do the same job, essentially. Why do you need all those buildings, manpower, where you can match them together? And you have all, you know, multiple agencies. For instance, also I've talked about pilgrimage. Why are we investing in pilgrimage? When even the holy books for the pilgrimage says, if you don't have money, don't go on pilgrimage, but you're spending billions of naira. Instead of investing money in Taraba kids and uh, Kaduna and Kano kids to go to school, you're sending more pilgrimage to Mecca, and we're sending more pilgrimage, uh, I mean, pilgrims to Israel. Then you have more kids doing uh, WIAC. 
in some of the states. It's You're speaking fantastic. more like an activist rather no, than uh, someone who understands. I just told you I wasn't a politician it's a few minutes ago. You didn't so, agree. No, so. no, no, no. I'm saying, <laughs> no, what, what I don't agree with is the fact that um, that I am a journalist. Yes. And I don't I want to call too. it. Uh, no, no, you, you were one, sir. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so, a journalist. Uh, if well, I don't I, want to I'm be called. a citizen I, journalist. Yeah, <laughs> I made myself a journalist, not. If, if, if I don't want to be called a journalist, doesn't mean that I'm not a journalist. Okay. That's so, what I mean. No. You, you practice. I mean, you are doing politics right no, now. I'm doing it political makes... activism. <laughs> <laughs> the one of I, I, a revolutionary kind. I and I don't know how far that will go. I mean, that will take you. This you know the reason why you know, I'm asking? Yeah, go ahead. You're, you're trying to pull down the house, isn't it? No. In the manner I'm, in which I'm, you are approaching. I'm trying to pull down this part of the house that has collapsed on the people. Take the people out of the rubble. That's what I'm doing. Yes. That's, you, that's different from pulling down. And you down. think this will work? It will work because Nigerian people are tired of a house that is collapsing on them on, a, on, on, a, on an annual basis. You yeah. know, so I, more I, people, what, what? 33 million people are poor in a country where five people have more money than 200 million people. What kind of system is that? Your house has already collapsed. Are you going after those who you think have stolen the, the, the nation's wealth? I've always done that. Even as an individual, would you be doing that? Should you? Oh yeah, on an official level. How would you do it? Very aggressively. You know, look, every Nigeria president is always hungry to become the minister of petroleum resources. No, me, I'm not going for that. If I'm hungry for a ministerial position, it will be the minister of justice, social, economic, cultural, and physical justice in the country. I will be interested in what's happening there, so that nobody gets away with the kind of impunity that has bedeviled and destroyed Nigeria to what it is today. I'm not going to lie about it. So you can choose to vote for me or not vote for me. You can choose, like I said, you can choose to vote for the axe if you're in the forest because the handle of the axe is made of wood. And then there will be no forest left when the axe goes gaga. What, what, in what manner do you think you will fight corruption? I mean, is it the style of some Asian no, countries? It's, it's, I'm, I'm not a fan of the style right now because... What we've seen is that there are corruption story. I mean, corruption cases have been in course since 2007. I'm asking that my, would, you, my, would you be employing some European way of fighting corruption or some Asian way of no, fighting corruption? We can fight corruption. You look at the way China does go goes about. I don't believe in. If you are talking about death penalty, I'm not. I don't believe in death penalty. I don't want to. How do you think it's best to to uh, it's, it's, to make sure, it's preventive. It's to make sure that they don't even lay their hands on the bulk of our resources before we stop them. And then we can do enforcement of a few who might outsmart the system. And afterwards, the system doesn't pardon you. I'm not going to be president who pardons somebody who's convicted for corruption. You no have once talked about, talk about the fleet of cars and, and the flight uh, yes. plane that, they, that is in the custody of, um, of uh, oh, public governor, officials. Of public yes. officials. Yes. Uh, w w give us an idea of uh, how you would like yours to be should you be president. You know, it should be. It shouldn't be more than that of a Ghanaian president I saw once. It's like a car in front and one at the back. That's like the security car and the president's car. Will you be I driving mean, yourself? I, why not? I'm young enough to drive myself if I should want to. Most of them drive around at night to go meet uh, concubines. Why can't they be driving during the daytime? I mean, let's come to the reality and perhaps wrap up on this. And we are talking reality yeah. now. Sure. No, no, no. no. I, 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 it's the reality, about the reality of whether of or not you can to. win this election. Yes. Do you see yourself winning this election? Absolutely. If people listen to this, you know, it's a function of, you know, I'm not, you see, I changed my strategy in this election cycle. You know, I changed from crowds, you know, the echo chambers of Gang Gada crowd, because you can rent crowd the way you want. I've been to places where people who were in a stadium for APC waited for PDP. You know, same people, different uniform. But now we want to talk to the people. And I'm talking to people, I'm reaching out to professionals. I've attended most professional uh, uh, gatherings to let them know that there's a way to change the game or change the narrative, but you must change those who are in charge. But the problem we're having is that, and this includes the press, I can't stop saying it. It is those who have no ideas to share with the public that you claim are frontliners, not those who have fantastic ideas. I've, in my course of uh, doing a lot of uh, media recently, not a, I won't say a lot, but in the little media attention we get, I found some very fantastic fresh candidates who have better ideas than the people you keep pushing in front of the public, and you need to stop that. The media, and when I say you, I'm not talking about the media. I mean, the media needs to stop, you know, doing that. You need to put people who have great ideas on how to make this country work in front of the people. Keep, let them keep repeating these ideas until everybody's hearing them. And not people 
who don't talk or when they talk can't even you can't even hear them they are not uh, audible enough or they are not clear enough mm. and you keep saying they are the frontliners well, <laughs> how can they know, be frontliners the reason why when they don't have frontline have, ideas brought to you here twice in that's two why weeks. i said i'm not you know? accusing you <laughs> so, yeah uh, uh, to, but i thought to, you should have brought us to your own you know uh town hall meeting wait wait for it yeah all right um on a, on a final note time mr showware um for those uh obedient supporters who said you are only angry because uh, you don't like their candidate because and you always speak about their candidate because you thought that you were going to be the third force or the the third leg of the race and i mean in the manner in which it was described the last time you were there and perhaps because peter will be is ahead of you in polls and all of that is that a kind of uh, anger that you have towards <laughs> him because i see that you also so tweet. so so was i angry about peter b in 1992 1993, when I fought the military, Peter B was not even known in. The, I, I wanted to respond to the. No, I'm, I'm just giving Who have you accused a you context. Of this? You know, yeah. that's that's campaign, social media harassment that all of us engage in. It. Everybody wants to get ahead of the other candidates. You understand? Wasn't Peter B the deputy to Atiku in 2019? I didn't even mention his name. If you didn't bring him up now, I won't be talking about him. What I'm saying is that. Any campaign that is childish, that doesn't address the issues, mm. are, you know, relevant, but not important. You think you have better ideas than oh, the yes. people on we, the ballot? You, look, why don't we do this? Bring me and Obi to discuss our ideas on your show. I guarantee you he will not come. I, I'm saying this to you. He's not the only one on the ballot. Yes, but you brought him up now and said he's a third No, no, because that's what the, his followers no, have accused Because I know the other two people, we're not sure. Who are the other two people? But, yeah, be local, that's Ashiwaju and Atiku. They dare not show up. They're not, they're not showing up now. So? Why do you they, think so? Are, are they going to show up in your, in your town hall We've meeting? We've invited them. Yes, you, everybody's invited and they don't show up anymore. In fact, since they saw that I've been attending professional events, they have stopped coming. Okay. Including Peter Obi. You think they are afraid of you? I, they should be afraid because anybody that's got no ideas at this time should be afraid of those who have ideas. Omo Yalesha Ore, presidential candidate of the AAC, thank you so much indeed for coming tonight. Thank you very much for having me. I wish you the very best in your yes. push to become Nigeria's next president. Nigeria, they use computer. The leaders of Nigeria, they use radio where they turn the knob.